Today, we find out what happens when you pass a current through a wire that is either embedded in or in front of some rigid extruded foam insulation like this, which is very commonly used today. And I've set up the wall with a channel in the foam along here, which is what apparently many people do. And this side over here is going to get some of the fiberglass insulation rolled on top of the foam so the wire is between the rigid foam and the fiberglass. And that's also apparently very common. And so we know what's going on. I have this little thermocouple and we're going to embed it in the channel next to the wire and then cover it up with a piece of foam insulation like that. And the reason we're going to do that is is that's what perhaps a very attentive homeowner might do to make sure they have the best possible insulation and it also sets up the worst case scenario for our wire that is of course now going to have all of the heat it's produced confined in all four directions by a layer of foam. So now we'll put in our layer of fiberglass in front of this panel. As in the previous tests, we'll use these old plastic sheets to keep the fiberglass in place and also to restrict the airflow much like it would in a typical wall. It's a 2x4 stud wall. Now the outside which is the back would normally be concrete and then the layer of rigid foam and then the layer of fiberglass and then on top here would be a layer of drywall except we're of course using plastic so we can see what's going on. And for this side over here I'm just going to put a layer of plastic over the wall and yes it's dirty from our previous tests but we won't let that bother us. And what this plastic will serve to do is restrict any airflow around here to pretty much what you would get if we had drywall in front because it wouldn't be a fair test if we had a fabulous supply of oxygen available if this foam started catching fire. So we're all set up to begin testing by using the arc welder over there to pass some current through our wire under test. We have an ammeter set up to monitor the current we're using. A thermocouple set up to show the temperature of the wire embedded in the insulation. And a voltmeter to show the voltage drop along the wire which will allow us to estimate the amount of power that is being dissipated in the wire in the wall. So with that having been said, let's start testing. So we're going to start off by bringing the current up to 15 amps and we'll leave it there for 15 to 20 minutes until the temperature stabilizes. It's 25 minutes later and the temperature is 63, 64 degrees which means the temperature has risen about 33 degrees, 33 Celsius that is. And the interesting thing is in about the first 15 minutes it pretty much rose 30 degrees and it's taken another 10 minutes to go up another 3 or 4 degrees. And that pretty much tells us that the time constant of this system is about 15 to 20 minutes or so which is what we've been guessing at in previous tests. Now the temperature of 64 degrees is really quite notable because 
older generations of 14-2 wire had a maximum temperature of 60 Celsius. The newer ones have a maximum temperature of 90. So certainly, if this was an older piece of wire, this would already be a bad situation. As it is, we're doing okay, but bear in mind the outside temperature is 30 Celsius, which is about 80 Fahrenheit. So if you had this in an attic in the summer, where the temperature might already be 50 Celsius, well now you add 30 more Celsius to it from the wires heating, and we're at 80, which is close to the 90 degree limit of that wire. So this really shows that in a worst case scenario, we don't actually have too much headroom for things like overcurrents. And that really is because the insulation is doing its job. It's keeping as much heat as possible from moving through the insulation. So it's staying near the wire. And it's also worth pointing out that if we had twice as much insulation around the wire, we would expect twice the temperature rise. And speaking of overcurrents, what we'll do now is raise the current to 30 amps, and then we'll come back in 20 minutes and look at the temperatures. It's 25 minutes later, and look at the temperature, 156 degrees. So the temperature of our wire embedded in the foam insulation is 156 degrees Celsius. That's considerably hotter than the boiling point of water. Water is 100 degrees Celsius. We do have one and a quarter volts of voltage drop. So we haven't had a short in our wire yet, which is really quite amazing. And I'm guessing it's mainly because the way it's all installed here, there isn't much pressure on the wire, so it's not pushing the conductors together to short. I don't see any visible signs of issues and certainly, oh, I can feel a bit of temperature here. It's just slightly warmer and same over here. And I think what we should do is we should look at this with the IR camera. We see temperatures ranging from 27 to about 35 Celsius. The locations of the wire is obvious. What does it look like on the back? Oh, we can certainly see where the wire is. And on the right side in this image, where we have the wire embedded in the extruded foam insulation, it's clearly a little bit warmer. And that makes sense because there's less insulation between the drywall and the wire. Now one thing's for sure, I certainly don't see any visible signs of problems anywhere along here. So I think the thing to do is we will once again up the current and we'll up it to perhaps 40 amps this time and see what happens. So at 40 amps we're getting about 70 watts being dissipated along the length of our wire. So that probably means we're getting 25 watts being dissipated in each of our two wall sections. That's now an incredible amount of heat when there's so much insulation around the wire. I'm watching this voltage here because if it suddenly decreases, what that would mean is we've now had a short develop somewhere along here in the wire and I'm kind of surprised it hasn't happened already at these really quite enormous temperatures. So 15 minutes later the temperature is pretty much leveled off. Oh and I was gonna up the temperature but I see some smoke so I won't. Let's look at that. There's smoke coming from around here and also some escaping through the plastic here. I think it's coming from this side so not surprisingly we're clearly at the point where the plastic and or the insulation is not doing very well. 
the voltage here at almost 2 volts at 40 amps still shows we have a complete circuit with no shorts, which is, as I said before, quite incredible. So I think what we're going to do is, even though there is some smoke coming out, everything is pretty much stabilized, so we'll up the current to maybe 45 amps. So one interesting thing that's happening now, which is only a minute or two at 45 amps, is the temperature of the wire has dropped. The voltage and current have remained the same, so we have the same power going in. So what's really interesting at about two minutes into 45 amps, the temperature has dropped maybe five degrees or so. And I think what may be happening is that the extruded foam insulation is getting so hot it is maybe melting away from the wire, providing some air space for air to circulate and cool the wire. Because we have the same voltage and same current, so the amount of power going in has not changed. It is also possible that with the foam beginning to melt, the thermocouple has moved away from the wire somewhat, and that's why it's showing a slightly lower temperature. And interestingly, as I'm saying that, the temperature's now gone back up to 51 or 52 degrees. Oh, but what's happened here is our voltage has dropped from about 2.25 volts to 1.88. That probably means that we have a short somewhere in here would be my guess. And that would be perhaps where we'd expect it because we have a lot more insulation around the wire than over here. So this part of the wire would be warmer and therefore more likely to fail first. Let's look at things with the IR camera. So outside temperatures of the wall from the front through the plastic are up to about 45 Celsius and quite a bit warmer on the side where the fiberglass insulation is and somewhat more distributed on the other side where there's circulating air, not surprising. Let's look at the back. So maybe maximum about 35 degrees or so and like before a bit warmer on the side where the wire is embedded in the foam. So since the wire has obviously failed on the fiberglass side. I think what I'm going to do is just up the temperature a bit, or I should say the current, to 50 amps, and maybe we'll see something interesting happen. So what seems to be happening is these little places where there were holes in the insulation seem to be getting bigger, so I'm guessing hot gases are being emitted through them, and that's eating away at the foam insulation. And I can certainly see gas coming out from here, which again, may or may not be visible on the camera. The area around the wire is clearly moving back now, and the insulation that I stuck in the channel is moving in, so this insulation is all shrinking away from the wire. So one thing that's happening here is the airspace in this section of wall is filling up with smoke, and you can even see some of it coming out the sides here and depositing on the inside of the plastic. So to speed things up and make it more interesting, let's raise the current to 70 amps. So at this point, our wire over here is certainly smoking, as is the plastic, and lots of smoke coming up from the top. I'm moving away. The area of foam all around the wire is certainly melted away. What does the IR camera look like? Oh, look at that. We have maximum temperatures now of 75 degrees, but I'm not sure if that's the wire. Let's look at the foam area. Oh, it's getting up to 100 degrees. I think it's about to catch fire if it isn't already burning inside. What does the back look like? The wire is very visible. And once again, confirming our short is about halfway through into the fiberglass side. The, the temperatures are considerably higher on the back as well. So there probably is a fire going on. Vast amounts of smoke being given off. This would be quite lethal inside a house. And once again, you'd hope the smoke detector goes off. 
certainly a huge gap formed around the wire. The insulation is all melted away. It's extremely hot to touch, by the way. Now we're getting a lot of smoke here and much less there, so I'm wondering if the short has occurred here now. I think we'll just up the current to maybe 80 amps. So we've got our little fire here and it looks like it's going out. No more current traveling through our wall. So what an unspectacular result. So I think what I'm going to do is turn off the current. We'll rip the plastic off the wall and see what we can see inside. So look what's happened. Our wire, our wire is here and this whole area around it has shrunk back as far as the drywall here. And interestingly, it's not actually stuck to the drywall. So in spite of giving off a terrible smoke, the interesting thing is the extruded foam did not go up in flames, which is quite remarkable. So let's see if we can move the styrofoam, and we can. I guess it's not styrofoam, it's extruded foam. And look at the hole that was created. Really huge, but interestingly enough, no fire. Let's see if we can remove the bottom piece. Yes, we can. I really would have thought it would be stuck to the drywall. Same sort of thing, but not nearly as much. So what you can see happening is the heat and hot gases from the wire clearly melted the foam above it quite a bit more than the foam below it. Now let's see what's under the fiberglass. Oh, look at that. So this really shows us what happened. So it's quite clear that way more heat was developed over here than over here. And what that does is confirm our suspicion that the short occurred somewhere around here. And if we look at the fiberglass, which I won't touch because you really don't need to touch that stuff. It's really quite horrible. What we can see is the fiberglass itself was only minimally affected. And because of that, well, all the heat was directed back and into the foam insulation. And with this much melting, you sort of wonder whether some of it was more than just heat from the wire, but maybe more burning of the insulation from the wire itself that contributed to it. That's another experiment. And before we wrap up the video, perhaps we should think about what conclusions we can draw from today's result. Perhaps the biggest result is how well this insulation survived the overheat from the wire. And while it did melt back and produce a lot of toxic smoke, it didn't catch fire. And once again, that's a good thing. The other interesting thing was the temperatures we reached with this wire over here, not even at the super high overcurrents, but even at the regular current of 15 amps. And while we hit about 60 degrees or close to it with normal currents, you could certainly imagine that if you had an installation like this in an attic where the temperature was already elevated another 30 degrees Celsius, well, you would now end up with a particularly bad situation. So once again, this sort of shows that the built-in safety margins of a lot of our wiring are in fact acceptable or even pretty good. But it's also the type of thing where you really wouldn't want to push them anywhere close to their limits. So that brings this video to an end. Thanks for watching. See you next time.